Well, for more on the state of U.S. retail, let's cross to Phil Davis, publisher of philstockwell.com. Welcome, Phil. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. Now, as we heard there, some retailers not really benefiting from this rise in consumer spending. How would you describe the current state of the retail industry? Well, it's mixed. I mean, first of all, online, of course, is booming. That's a whole new trend that's, that's going on. The, um, the big box re realtors, um, they've got problems because they have a big footprint. Like Macy's, you just mentioned, they closed 100 stores. That's about 10% of their stores. That reflects a trend towards online sales, which is about 10% of all sales at this point. So closing 10% of their stores is a rational response to lower store traffic. Now, is that something that's unique to the U.S., or is that a global trend that we're seeing? Um, I imagine, well, no, it's, at, it's catching on globally, but the U.S. Is, is, you know, racing to the online shopping world because we already had a, a very strong delivery infrastructure, you know, with UPS and Federal Express and the post office even delivers the packages. Um, not a lot of countries have such a robust delivery system. Europe has pretty good... But, and Japan, but you know, you get to China and stuff, it's not that easy to get a package shipped overnight. And that's where your delay is, is, is laying in that infrastructure, which takes many years. Now, you touched on some of those issues. So what would you say is weighing the most heavily on retailers at the moment? <clears throat> I, I, think, I think basically it's a, they don't, they're, they're too big. I mean, you've got, you know, these giant stores. When you talk about a Macy's, you're talking about a, you know, a 100, 200,000 feet of retail space versus a, a regular store that's going to be 10,000, 20,000 feet. Um, they've got too much space. They're paying too much money in rent. They're paying too much money for the people to keep up the store. They're paying too much money for inventory. They, they've got to get more flexible. They've got to get leaner and meaner and only have the stuff that people come to the store for, not... They, you know, they, they, have to get re they have to jettison the things that can be bought online and, and be build up their own online presence to uh, sell that stuff to their own consumers, but without being in the store. So where do you see the industry going from here? As you mentioned, some of these trends, more stores going online, having issues with their brick and mortar stores. How can they really step up their efforts then to make sure that they just don't lose their customers? I, I don't think they're going to lose all their customers. I think there's a number. Um, it's, uh, it's interesting. I was just looking at uh, Sears, and I was thinking back on 100 years ago when Sears was the Amazon of its day, right? It used to be that everybody had to buy everything at one store in town, and then Sears started putting out a catalog, and they would deliver, you know, using the Wells Fargo wagon would come and deliver, deliver things to you. And um, Sears had this catalog, and that was Amazon at the time. In 1900, the Sears catalog was Amazon. And Sears became a gigantic, monolithic thing. But they didn't destroy the entire retail area. They just took a percentage of it that people liked buying from catalogs. But, but that, you know, obviously, and obviously the way Sears went, that had its day. By 1980, the catalogs stopped publishing. Right. People just weren't interested anymore. Now, we have seen this rise in consumer and business confidence, and some would say driven in part by Donald Trump's economic promises to really bring back jobs and spending on things like infrastructure. How long do you expect that rally to continue, and will consumers stay this excited? I No, I don't think so. I think we're really toppy right now. I think a lot of stocks are overvalued. We've moved to a mainly cash position. Um, we, have, we still have longs, but we're, we're well protected. We're using hedges. Um, the problem is that, you know, it's, it's an over-promise, under-deliver kind of thing. It's almost, as you said a moment ago, um, about projecting 4% GDP growth when the World Bank says, no, it's more like 2 And this quarter was supposed to be 2.4%, 2.5% GDP growth, turned out to be one6 you, you can't just wave a magic wand and get 4% growth, especially when the infrastructure plan is only a, hundred, it's only a trillion dollars over 10 years. That's not a lot of infrastructure. That's $100 billion a year. We have a $19 trillion GDP. A hundred billion is a very small drop in the bucket. Well, we'll definitely have to see how that plays out. Thank you so much for your insights. Phil Davis from philstockwell.com.